Good day YouTubers, I headed out for another overnighter and in this video I want to cover some tips on overnighting. I've been asked by several people about overnighting on the boat. So I'm going to cover some tips on the anchoring, on how to plan your overnight trips, being flexible while you're out there, changing your mind if things don't look quite right, having a bit of food on the boat and a spot to fish that isn't all that popular but I've found is pretty good. I hope you enjoy it. Let's roll the clip. Well, the forecast wasn't too bad. was to overnight out at Harry's. It wasn't going to be the smoothest night, but it wasn't going to be too bad. I think plan B might be to head back to Peel and anchoring around there. The wind from the northeast, I can try uh, the West Peel reefs and the drop off. And if it's too rough there, I can always go into Horseshoe Bay and have a nice calm night and do some fishing in the morning. Well, there you go. It took me about half an hour to get out here and in that time the wind went from about three knots up to about 15 and now it's dropped off again. I've been out here maybe half an hour. So in the space of an hour it went from three knots to 15 and back to three. And it looks like being a good night so plan A's a go. I'll be out here at Harry's trying out an overnight fish here. Haven't got the Minn Kota, so that's going to make it really awkward for me. I'm not used to doing things without the Minn Kota. We'll just have to see what happens. A few other boats here doing an afternoon fish. There's a jet ski here somewhere. I think he's on his way home. So, see how we go. Well, the forecast hasn't changed, but the wind's coming up again now. And I'm starting to see a few white caps here. It's getting a little bit lumpy. It's not too bad yet. If it doesn't get any worse, it'll be okay. But if it does, it'll be a bit of an uncomfortable night. So I'm thinking about plan B again. I've got uh, probably a couple of hours to make up my mind before I've got to be anchored up for the night. So plenty of time to think about it. Considering the roust or peel, if it doesn't get too bad, the rouse would be alright, but if it was likely to come up at all, here would be a better choice. See what comes in an hour or so. I was just going to take a photo of this to show you on the video. That was my drift line a minute ago. Then I came over here trying to drift back over that fish mark, and it was coming down this way. This would have to be, this area of uh, the Rouse Channel would have to be one of the hardest areas I've ever tried to drift. Uh, not too bad at getting over the spot that I want to drift over, but here the drift just seems to change all around this area. Doesn't matter where you start, you seem to go in a different direction. Really hard to pick the current, at least I find it that way. But we're getting into some shows of uh, something down there. I don't know if it's worth having, but it is some, ooh, something bigger on the side vision and on the hummingbird it's coming up quite good yeah all right hopefully something likes the bait i've got oh we're gonna go right over that mark too now the <laughs> drift changed again it's hard to pick i had a little bit of interest on both rods there for a second i've still got time on this one i think i better get this one up and check the bait Ooh. Yeah. Yes! Have I yes? I don't think he's real big though. Oh no. Might not be as small as I thought. Ah! Woo! True, what's he? Spanish. Too small. Oh no, hang on. Big pike. <laughs> big. Big pike. That would be the biggest pike I've ever caught. All right, let's see about getting you off the hook.
Oh, it's a Gamagatsu circle hook that did the damage. How big are you? 60. Nothing else. I need to think about anchoring up for the night too. Oh, see if I can get bait rod down quickly. It's a little bit twisted. Yeah, it's got one. <laughs> oh dear. Not really set up for the bait yet. Oh, I think I missed the bait now. It's just too slow getting in for it. I only got the one. I'll have to go for another drift before we anchor up for the night then. Turtle. Might get him on the sonar for the side vision. Oh, yep, there he is. I've been asked a bit about how I anchor up for the night, so I'm thinking that, oh, hang on, bait, bait. <laughs> Gone over it. This is the problem not having a mincota. I can't lock on a spot when I see something. Oh, I'm going to give the I'll give the bait check a miss. Oh, it's much harder without a mincota. I think I might get anchored up for the night about now. Figure out where our drift is. All right, if we're going to drift that way, I want to be up about there. Got plenty of fish underneath us here too. So I think anywhere around here will do and just bail me up a bit. It all depends which way we lay on the anchor. We're in 40 feet of water and that's about 120 feet of rope we want out. And good, we're about 130 feet away from that mark, 140 feet. So I think I'm going to try to drop it around about here and just see what happens. I got it in reverse, just in gear, but in reverse. I pull the anchor out. I don't want it all bundled up underneath us. Now, I just judge it by the angle, how much rope is out, because I don't have any sort of counter on the uh, winch. Uh, looking a tad steep now that it's pulling up. So, touch in reverse again, and I'll wait a bit more out. It's better to have too much anchor rope out than not enough. All right. Pulling up on that, so let's see how that looks. Too far away from the waypoint I wanted, which is the problem I have with anchors. I find it hard to get it right. Uh, Mincator makes it far easier to get on the spot I want. Uh, yeah, definitely going to want to go back a bit further. I'll just wait until we settle on the anchor and make sure I know which way we're going to face and then I might have a better guess at just where to drop the anchor to get us on the spot. Well, that's taking up though, we're on some bait. So, have another shot. All right, I'm gonna have to move a little bit because I'm not quite where I want to be. Oh, 
And that just means that we need to pull the anchor up and put it down about where I am now. So I've got to come back till I'm about 70 feet away from the mark, 80 feet away from the mark, and then drop the anchor again. And when you're pulling the anchor up, give it a little bit of forward throttle so you're not putting too much strain on your winch, but not that much that it goes loose. You want to keep a little bit of weight on it. Okay, now down. Yeah, okay. Looks like a reasonable angle on the rope. Alright, now we've got to see which, because I think we're bloody all facing the wrong way again. God, I hate this place for current. I just cannot, cannot figure it. Now we're facing away from where I want to be. Right, well, I'm going to go and anchor right on top of it, and then whenever we, whichever way we swing, we should be on the edge of it. Hmm, just had a skill of bait go under me. I had the sabiki in at just the right time to pick up a few, but they're gone now. But I've got a few there. I've got four for the night, plus the one I got before. Well, I hope it's not going to be too dark for you to see this, but when you're planning to anchor somewhere where you expect it to be a little bit rough, it's a bit hard to work the gas stay. Yeah, believe me, I've tried it. And what happens is you're hanging on to the pan, the fry pan with one hand, trying to cook with the other hand, and then your rod goes off. So certainly not the best. But if you want something hot to eat, this is a good way to go. Bowl, sauce, Cheerios, thermos full of hot water. You use Frankfurt or Cheerios. I need to get the lid back on it now, which will overflow it. Right, you just need to leave that sit there for a bit while the Cheerios heat up. Yeah, not perfect, but it is hot, or at least warm, and you can do it when it's rocking a bit. I set up the anchor drift alarm at night time too. Uh, now, I always forget to turn them off in the morning, so it goes off when I start to move, and then I remember I've got to turn them off, it doesn't matter. Key point is it's on and it will wake me up if we do drift. Never had it happen yet, but always better to be safe. Yeah, I'm not sure how this is going to come out. Uh, just got a little May Wong. Uh, just give me a measure. Hey. There's the 34. Alright, hang on. Yeah, 33 and a half, 33 and a half, that's not too bad. Uh, give me a bit of a bleed out, he'll be alright. I don't think you'll see it, but there's a big turtle just out the back, he's come up a few times. Just put the video on for a minute and see if he comes up again. Pretty big fella. Now, I don't think it'll come out in the video either, but it's quite interesting to watch the little fish around coming up into the light. Fish eat fish. The little fish come up, the bigger fish come up to eat them. Nothing big enough to catch, and most of it's not even big enough to use for bait, but it's quite a fascinating display. That's the uh, burly bag floating in the water there that you see, and that's probably one of the things that's attracting all these fish up here, apart from the light. Fish will always come up to the light. It's a little bit after first light now, but the sky over Stradbroke is looking pretty good. A lot of cloud in the sky, not supposed to be any rain. Well, here's some fish splashing around, be light enough to get mobile shortly. I just want to drift the area so 
want a little bit of visibility so I can see which way I'm drifting. I was still in the Rouse, I overnighted in the Rouse and I had a bit of a drift around uh, when I woke up this morning but without the Minn Kota on, uh, the drift in here is all over the place so I gave up on that, I couldn't lock on to I couldn't spot lock on the areas where I saw the bigger fish, so all I was pulling up was bait. I'm having a bit of a troll now, see if I can pick up some mackerel. As it turned out, you can see by the weather that I could have overnighted out at Harry's. Would have been a bit rough early on, but come 11, 12 o'clock it calmed right down. And the trolling didn't come up empty handed. I got a baby grinner. <laughs> uh, he'll go in the belly bucket. I've just stopped in the small ship's channel to have a little bit of a fish for whiting. It's been many years since I've actually targeted whiting. Oh, geez. Probably not since I was a teenager. No, uh, I thought I'll. Uh, there's a few baits around, I'll go away from them and just have a bit of a try. See how I go, I haven't got the right bait, haven't got the right rig, but I just thought I'd have a yeah, bit of a fish. See if I get some bites anyway. <laughs> I think everyone who's told thinks I know what I'm doing because lo and behold, I'm surrounded by baits now. I did come here to get away from everyone. <laughs> uh, I just can't fathom it sometimes. Well, that's it for the video. It was a major blue not taking the right bait out with me, so I blame that for only getting two fish, but hey, two fish I gotta feed. Had a good time out on the water, learned some more about my sounders while I was out there, that's always a good thing. Saw some dugongs, saw a heap of turtles, saw some dolphins, that's all fun too. Love to see nature in action. Hope you got something out of the tips in this video, hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you for taking the time to watch it. If you'd like to see more of my videos, you can go to my YouTube channel. Don't forget to click like, comment and subscribe. And hit that notification bell if you want to see more. Until next time, good fishing.